Oh, wait, wait, it has its own set of primary and secondary fires? Whoa! Void accelerate primary fire seems like a stream of fast moving nano nanites, which we saw as the little dots here, right, guys? The nanite particles have a travel speed that requires you to lead your targets, but there's no damage fall off. Okay, so maybe it goes infinitely. The fact that he clarifies there's no damage fall off means that we have literal infinite damage beam. Um, that's wild, okay. Um, this gives Ramatra a longer range option, but there's an advantage to using this weapon close range. Limit leverage in this way. If you're close to enemies and you put your staff in right in their face, you're gonna do quite a bit of damage, especially if you're hitting crits. Um, I don't understand what this means. I don't know if he's just saying it's easier, or Lehman is, or Tess, sorry, Tess Lehman. If Tess is saying that they are, it's easier to hit the shots because you're close range, because you're hitting crits, or if there's some sort of damage component that, but but they, they, they said there's no damage fall off. So I assume it's just because it's easier to hit crits with. Yeah, okay. The secondary ability, okay, so the secondary ability on the staff, I assume, is void barrier, a temporary high health barrier, oh, oh, high health, temporary though, high health barrier that a Ramatra can place in a target location. So now that we're hearing high health, I'm expecting this number. So 650 to 800 would be my guess. Uh, place in a targeted location. I was expecting lower than that, but now I'm not so sure. When you activate the barrier, you'll see a line on the floor to confirm where you want to place the barrier in its range, like Maywall. Uh, use it defensively to protect your teams and cut off enemies, or use it offensively to create space and close the gap between you and the other team. Okay, no surprises there. I, I'm not super high. I would. I hope that it's not super high health. I would love to see if it was like something that you could frequently put up um, more frequently, but it was very breakable. Like I legitimately wouldn't mind if it if we literally had like a 250 HP barrier. But you had it on like an eight second cooldown or something like that or two where it's like almost like a zarya bubble in terms of its fragility but it could be used dynamically and in, in a lot of different ways for bursts of value um temporary implies to me three to four seconds probably five seconds tops uh everything about this form enables you to close the gap between enemies you can use form tactically move in on enemies activate them okay so the good news that we're, we're reading about his dynamics here is his, this has a lot more range than i thought and the, i don't know if this is good news for the health of the game but this being high health also means that we have more ranged options for ramatra so you're talking about a hero that has more range than i anticipated Okay, that's why that's why we don't hesitate to rushing to conclusions. I'm not going to be hesitating to rushing to conclusions even after the gameplay trailer comes out, and I'm not going to be hesitating to rushing to conclusions. Or I'm not going to be rushing to conclusions even after the cure is released. You have to be very careful about you know hot takes, but I will say this is encouraging to me that this actually has good range. Right, that's what we need uh, for heroes in Overwatch 2 to prevent them from being Junker Queen 2.0s, where we have the hero doesn't have good range, and so then has an overwhelmingly overpowered brawl hero, and then that completely ruins Overwatch 2's meta, and then you have to nerf her into the ground, and then now she's trash or overpowered. It's very hard to find it in between. This hero maybe is a little bit more dynamic than that. <clears throat> uh, okay. <clears throat> Namus's form. <laughs> this pose is... It, the look is cool, but the pose is also like, hey. Because <laughs> uh, a giant protector or threat, depending on your perspective. He bulks up with extra armor. Again, the word armor, implying armor, the damage reduction from armor, right? Not just HP. And he forms two extra arms, which serve as his weapons in Namus's form. Pummel launches a short-range power wave. Again, wave, no shields, with each swing. It's a piercing attack. Oh! They'll all get hit. We talked about this. We predicted this. All AOE, all within a clump. Bang, 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 bang. It's really nice for playing around things like Reinhardt Shield, Divas, Defense Manager, and Winston Bubble. So it goes through everything. Everything. Sigma Shift, we assume. The only thing that I think that oh, I want... Okay, here's a question for you. Does Zarya... I feel like Zarya barriers should block it, though. I feel somehow I feel like that should work because a Winston everything that pierces in Overwatch doesn't pierce Zarya bubble, right? 
So theoretically, I feel like Zarya should still be good. Like Reinhammer. Yeah, that's that's probably an excellent, excellent uh, guess. Any sort of it's just like a melee attack, is what it is. It's a melee attack. Any sort of melee attack goes through shields and barriers. Um, well, actually, I don't know if I'm technically a melee goes through a shield. I don't think, but it goes through Winston Bubble, for example. I think Winston Bubble. I don't know. You guys get the you guys get what I'm talking about. Um, it's kind of difficult to dance in and out of bubble when Pumble goes straight through it, regardless. For block, Ramacha throws his big tank arms in front of his face. <laughs> really great. Reducing damage from the front. It's also effective reducing the damage of Hans's dragon and molten quarter type from surrounding him. Okay, so it's not just from the front, but it's also any um, anything that it's not directionally specific, right? To Hanzo is just you're in the form. I think it would probably also work on Sojourn's E as well. Um There's no cooldown on the block. You can use it whenever you want by weaving it in and out between your attacks. The trade-off is so you can't punch while using it and it slows you down. Very interesting, very interesting. That's for sure gonna be something that people complain about, but I think in, we'll have to see how it's actually executed before we we've, we have these rant and raves because that's a very interesting dynamic. And I do like that there's the ability to weave in and out of your attacks. I think that's theoretically, it might reduce the skill ceiling, the skill of the hero because you, you could do it whatever you want, but it does make it very, could make it very mechanically demanding to actually be able to react to blocking bursts of relevant damage and then being able to actually do damage on non-bursts. Um, interesting. Name says is an eight second ability with an eight second cooldown, so you're not permanently in this form. At most, you have a 50% uptime. Um, I assume that means that you cannot leave it whenever you want. So in other words, once you're locked in, you are locked in. Ravenous Vortex is a ball of nanites that slows, grounds, and damages enemies. The ability is a projectile that bounces off of walls, enemies, and... Oh, wait, 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 wait. The grounding part I think we missed. See Echo? Watch Echo. See that? I thought she was dying. That's kind of... It was kind of confusing perspective, but she's not dying. She actually just gets sucked down like a magnet. Okay. Uh, bounces off of walls, enemies, and slippery slopes like roofs. It must hit the floor to activate. Okay. Once activated, it opens up this big area that will slow enemies, pull them to the ground, and deal damage. Okay. Can also use this ability defensively to keep people of your teammates or lock down certain areas. I mean, it could be definitely used as a counter to Lucio compositions, where, again, Lucio compositions function as a unit a lot of the time, or more as a unit than other comps, and it slows them down, pulls them down. Uh, you could ground a Lucio, you could slow it down. Again, very much so like Sojourn E. This is how Sojourn E is used versus rush or dive compositions to create uh, a difficult thing for them to rush through, a, create a ball of pain, basically. So it could be good versus that. Um, Mm. Annihilation is a special ultimate, but there's something else going on at the same time. Annihilation is why is that? It's similar to Transcendence in the sense, as you guys were saying, this is it creates a big ring around him. Annihilation has beams that latch onto enemies within range, depleting their health, like Moira's Necrotic Grasp. Enemies need to be within ultimate's range or Matra's line of sight, but there's also another caveat to this ability. It doesn't end, says Layman. The beam is attached to an enemy. It pauses the duration of the ultimate. The ultimate self is really... If the beam is attached to an enemy, it pauses the duration of the ultimate. I'm not sure I understand this part. Oh, so the way to end the ultimate is to break, make sure that he's not... So as long as he is able to connect a beam to you, the ultimate continues. And as soon as the beam breaks, maybe there's like a two-second window where beam, 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 nothing, ult's over, you wasted it. But if it connects and it stays within Ramatra's area of effect, then it's over. And it keeps going and it keeps going and it keeps going and it keeps going and it keeps going. Got it. And then you could combo that, I assume, with your E to slow enemies down to keep them within beam. Yeah. 
While these tethered are attached, well, these tethers are attached to enemies, Rafa the benefits of, from Nemesis form. He gives the enemies two options with this ultimate: either eliminate him or move. Hmm. Interesting. Six hundred HP plus armor. Uh, ah, yeah, yeah. Good catch. Good catch. I actually didn't see that. So, six hundred HP including armor. Block, right click. Then you guys can see it here. The and that's actually a barrier. Yeah, 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 yeah. See, see. Yeah, yeah. The shift is the form itself. Got it. I'm an idiot. I'm a little slow. I'm a little slow. You guys have to, you have to bear with me. Okay. Um, oh, man. This one definitely does not feel as obvious as Kiriko. Kiriko was like low hanging fruit. Oh, dive hero. Ridiculous mobility. Good range. Obvious dive support. This one is not as obvious. We'll have to look at some more gameplay. I'm going to be interested to see like how relevant his range is, how that affects his dynamics. We'll have to see. Definitely interesting to see how he's going to be at in terms of playing around like the lack of mobility here. How is that going to affect his playstyle? Is is it going to be a Lucio only here? Because th this here's the thing: is like you're like there is relevant range, but then really where the hero is probably going to shine is the annihilation and the Nemesis form punch pummel right. And then if you don't have speed for that, how relevant are you? That's that's my question. Is it just going to be, this is another short range tank with relevant range, but the, his huge strengths are short ranges um, with his ultimate and everything. And in which case, do you have Lucio? Or is it an anti-dive tank where you can Ravenous Vortex and Annihilation on dives or pummel dive? Imagine a dive goes in through with a Winston bubble against you, and you're just pummel, just spamming pummel, 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 and then you summon a barrier right in the middle of the dive. Like that's somewhat useful. Is it as useful as a diva peel? Probably not, or a double Zarya bubble? Probably not. But it's 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 interesting to see. Um, spam tank. I don't know. Again, that's going to be relevant on how accessible is the barrier and how good is Ravenous Vortex. Um, and then also how good is just simply the Omnic form, just the, the Void Accelerator, right? Because Sigma's damage is extremely strong at range. Like, it is, it is so much better than any other range tank. Is this guy going to be able to compete with that at all? Uh, is Ravenous Vortex being able to apply at range going to be helpful in these spam wars? Um, by zoning off an area like a Sojourn E. Uh, is Pummel, are you ever going to be able to close distance with this hero to swap the Pummel form? Because to my, my thought process in this raw spam wars in like a Junker Town, are you going to ever be able to get close enough, soon enough, without speed to actually utilize the quote unquote spam strength? I'm not so sure that this guy is a spam tank. Um, feels like too much of his kit is revolving around getting close. There's the dynamics, right? This feels a little bit like Arissa, where like sh shining in. Uh, some ways and then shining in others, but not one dimensional, which is what we want, right? We don't want one dimensional. I would go so as far to say that Kiriko was two, the most one dimensional Overwatch 2 hero slash rework that we've gotten. Very, very dive oriented, not as good in Brawl. Um, I mean, she's over tuned, so she's good in anything, but like very clearly, strongly advantageous in dive. Whereas this one, this one's a hard read. I want hard read heroes, right? I want hard read heroes. Um, Best spam tank besides Sigma calling it now. I mean, you're probably right, but that's not exactly a very hotly contested position, is it? Like, Hog is okay. Aris is not that good. Reinhardt, no. Winston, no. Zarya is not that good. There aren't any good spam tanks right now, which is fine, again, right? But I think you might be right. 